And uh, this is a joint work with my PhD advisor, Zheng Fu Cao, and uh, uh, Ivan Visconti. And uh, this is the outline of my talk today. Uh, first, I will give a short introduction of a commitment scheme and the two notions of non-maliability. Then I will show our main result. Uh, finally, I will give a um, proof sketch of uh, our commitment scheme. So, you know, a commitment scheme is a two-party protocol between a commit and a receiver. You can consider it uh, as a a uh, lockable steely box. In a commitment phase, the committer put his secret value in the uh, box, lock the box up and hand the box to the receiver. And in the decommitment phase, the uh, committer gives the keys to the receiver, the receiver uses the keys to unlock the box and retrieve the value, secret value in the box. So uh, basically, uh, a commitment scheme uh, usually has two properties. In order to guarantee the security of the committer, we need a hiding property. It means that uh, before the commitment phase, uh, a receiver cannot learn the committed value. And uh, in order to guarantee the security of the uh, receiver, we need the binding property. It means that uh, uh, after the commitment phase, the committer cannot open its commitment in two different ways. In the literature, there are mainly two kinds of commitment schemes. One is statistically hiding commitment, and the other one is statistically binding commitment. So it is well known that the basic property of a commitment scheme cannot, may not be sufficient in many application scenarios. And uh, uh, when it was used in high-level protocols, Mm, there may be some problems, such as the maliability issues. I will take the digital, digital auction, for example. You see in the picture, there are three participants, uh, the auctioneer and the two players. Uh, we consider it as a sealed bid auction. And the first the auctioneer will ask the, both, both ask the two players to handle their secret bid. The first player may commit to his secret bid and uh, give the commitment to the auctioneer. The second player may accept the commitment of the first player. It then generates commit to a secret bid and uh, hand its commitment to the auctioneer. Uh, next, the auctioneer will ask both of the players to open their secret bid. So the first player opens commitment, its secret bid to the value V, and uh, the second player sees the uh, bid V, and it can open its commitment to the value V prime. Although, although the second player may not, uh, may not learn the secret bid before the decommitment of the first player, but uh, he can make sure that his commitment is one larger than the secret bid of the first player. So the basic properties of a commitment scheme cannot prevent the adversary from a second player from doing this. Uh, and this is why the researchers introduced a, introduce a notion of non-maliability. So uh, there are two notions of non-maliability. The first is non-maliability with respect to commitment. Uh, you see in the picture there is a man in the middle of the adversary. Uh, he may receive a commitment on the left and uh, generate a commitment uh, uh, on the right uh, with the receiver. So basically, if we see a commitment scheme is non malleable with respect to commitment, if the adversary, the man in the middle of the adversary, cannot generate, a, cannot, uh, should not be able to produce a new commitment uh, com prime to a value v prime and related to v with non negligible better probability after seeing com than before seeing com. And um, another notion of non-maliability is non-maliability with respect to opening or decommitment. And you see, we also uh, require that the adversary, um, after, after receiving the decommitment on the left, he, he is able to also, he is able to open the commitment on the right. So basically, we want the adversary to do equally well um, with or without uh, interacting on the left with the committer. Mm. So in our paper, we use a simulation-based definition. We uh, give a definition of a concurrent non-maliability by comparison with a man in the middle execution and a simulated execution. And you see in the picture there, in the man in the middle execution, the adversary 
may receive in polynomial many commitments on the left and it generates polynomial many commitment on the right. And using the random variable on the top denotes the values committed on the right. And the, in the simulated execution, there's all the simulator, there's no commit, there's no committer. The simulator will generate polynomial many commitments with the receiver. So the random variable on the top also uh, denotes the values committed in, in the commitments. So we see a commitment is non-malleable, concurrent non-malleable with respect to commitment if for every man in the middle adversary uh, that participate uh, uh, polynomial many sessions on the left and polynomial many sessions on the right, there exists a simulator that uh, Basically, we need the, uh, the two random, two probability ensembles are computationally indistinguishable. Oh, this is a notion of a concurrent non-malleability with respect to commitment. Uh, using similar ways, we can define concurrent non-malleability with respect to the commitment. Mm. So, uh, after introducing the two notions of non-malleability, a natural question is, uh, does the non-malleability that the former notion implies the latter notion. Um, it depends on the subtles of, of the definitions, at least for the simulation-based definition, especially in the plain model, and uh, we are not sure that the former definition implies the, uh, latter, no, uh, the latter notion. Uh, the main difficulty lies in that in the proofs of uh, non-malleability with respect to the to commitment, there are always a simulator. The simulator will internally run a copy of the adversary. It externally interacts with the receiver. And um, the common way of a simulator is uh, generate a, a commitment to dummy values on the left session, and uh, it will relay the messages between the internal adversary and the external receiver. So, but uh, in, the, in the proofs of non-malleability with respect to Commitment, uh, we only consider the commitment phase, and uh, there's the, the commitment phase does not involve, does not involve. But in the proof of non-malleability with respect to the, to the commitment, uh, the simulator must also emulate the left uh, the commitment phase. The uh, previous simulator may get stuck uh, because it does not does not know how to open its open its commitment. Uh, to a value other than a dummy value. So um, in, a, um, in a plain model, we are not sure that the, form, the, uh, uh, the formal notion implies the latter notion. But in a common reference tree model, uh, the, formal nation, the formal notion implies the latter notion. So this is a related work on statistical binding commitment scheme that is non-malleable with respect to commitment. You see the fifth result. Pass and Rosen has given construction of a concurrent non-malleable commitment scheme. And uh, it is rather efficient, but it uh, uh, uses non-black box techniques. And their assumption is a based on a family of uh, cloud-free permutations. And uh, the most recent result was about the past, and uh, we, uh, this result, the last uh, paper, uh, paper, and uh, uh, this paper will appear in this year's Euro Crypt Conference, and uh, uh, they also give a construction of a concurrent non malleable commitment scheme, but uh, uh, they only use black box techniques, and uh, their assumption, uh, I think it is similar, it is stronger than the uh, assumption of the past and chosen work, and they assume uh, one-way functions that uh, is secure against the sub-exponential circuits. Uh, so this is the statistical hiding commit uh, related work on statistical hiding commitment scheme that is uh, non-malleable with respect to the commitment. Uh, and you see, um, the Ostrovsky pass and Visconti in the TCC paper. The TCC paper, in a full version of their TCC paper, they gave a construction of a concurrent non-malleable commitment scheme. And they also assume the existence of a, uh, a family of cloud-free permutations. They are using non-black box techniques, and it, it is rather efficient. So all the 
previous work have left an open problem is that whether or not constant around the commitment scheme that is both the concurrent non-malleable with respect to commitment and the concurrent non-malleable with respect to the commitment exists in a plane model uh, and a stronger simulation based definition. So uh, the, the TCC paper, they have considered the computational hiding and the computational binding commitment scheme. And our work have focused on the statistical binding commitment scheme. So uh, before giving the uh, uh, before going on to the actual construction, we take a brief view, review of the tools, of the tools we used. Um, we use a statistical binding commitment scheme, a statistical hiding commitment scheme, and the tag-based non-malleable perfect zero knowledge argument of knowledge, and uh, a statistical statistical WI argument, argument of knowledge, and a comp computationally WI proof of knowledge and also a strong signature scheme. So the commitment, the commitment phase of our uh, scheme um, is similar to the, to the uh, OPV uh, paper and uh, it includes three stages. In the first stage, the commit will generate a commitment uh, C to the value V using a statistical binding commitment scheme and then it proves knowledge of opening of C using a tag-based non-reliable ZK argument of knowledge. And the tags of the proof is the uh, public key of the strong signature scheme. And uh, in the second stage, the receiver will use a statistical hiding commitment to generate two commitment C0 or C1 to two secrets V0 or V1, respect, respectfully, and then it proves knowledge of either secret and uh, it uses a statistical WI argument of knowledge. And in a third stage, the uh, commit will use a signature, strong signature scheme to generate a signature uh, to the transcript up to now, and uh, the, ver the receiver then will verify its correctness of the signature. So um, this is the decommitment phase of our scheme. It includes uh, three stages. Uh, four stages. In the first stage, the commit will generate a commitment C to the C prime to the dummy value using a statistical binding commitment. Then the receiver will open its values uh, V0 or v V1, and it then proves knowledge of opening of a residual commitment using a statistical WI argument of knowledge. In the second stage of the decommitment phase, the commit will open its value uh, to V and then it uses a computationally WI proofs of knowledge uh, to, show, to show that uh, either C is a commitment to V or C prime is a commitment to V0 or V1. And in the third stage, the commit will use a tag-based non-malleable or perfect argument, argument of knowledge to uh, to show that uh, C is a commitment to value V or it knows openings of either commitment C0 or C1. And uh, in the fourth stage, the commit will use a also use a signature scheme to generate a signature up to the transcript, to the transcript up to now. And uh, um, our main contribution lies in the uh, design of the decommitment phase, especially in the second stage of the decommitment phase. I will show later. Um, so in order to show uh, our commitment is a concurrent non-malleable commitment and a decommitment, we need to show that uh, the commitment is computational hiding, statistical binding, and uh, concurrent non-malleable with respect to both with respect to commitment and concurrent non-malleable with respect to decommitment. So, the computational hiding property uh, basically follows from the hiding property of the statistical binding commitment and the zero knowledge property of the tag based proof. And for the statistical binding property, and you can see, and in the second stage, in the second stage of the decommitment phase, and uh, we see mm, the first part of the uh, statement proved it is certainly wrong because the since the, commit, the adversary opens its commitment in two different ways. So the first part of the uh, statement is wrong. 
And uh, for the second part of the, so for the second part of the, um, a statement, and you see, the adversary has no way to learn the uh, information V0 or V1 in the commitment phase. So in the first stage of the commitment phase, the C prime uh, can't be a commitment to a V0 or V1. So the second part of the statement is is certainly wrong, and so. According to the unconditional soundness of uh, of the commitment of the um, computational proof of knowledge and uh, the statistical binding property is guaranteed. So, um, for the concurrent number liability with respect to the commitment, Pass and Rosa has shown that if a commitment is one many concurrent number liable, it is uh, a fully concurrent number liable. So. We only need to show that uh, the commitment is one many concurrent number liable. So the proofs uh, basically is essentially the same as that of the OPV paper, and uh, we only give a high level structure of the simulator. You see that yes, the simulator internally runs us a, a simulated copy of the adversary, it externally interacts with the receiver. So there's only commitment phase, uh, there's no decommitment phase. and uh, uh, in, in the left section, yeah, left interaction, the simulator will um, commit to the dummy values in the first stage of the left sessions. All other sessions, all other sessions of the left uh, commit, of the left commitment will be emulated by the simulator by running as honest commit stra strategy. And uh, in order to emulate the um, left right interaction for the Adversary, the simulator simply relays the messages between the simulator and the external receiver. So this is bas basically the high-level structure of, uh, of the simulator. And uh, uh, notice that we assume that the commitment phase and the decommitment phase don't overlap in time, in the proof. And uh, to show that our commitment is concurrent number liable with respect to decommitment, uh, we also uh, give a high level structure of the simulator. The simulator also runs a simulated copy of the adversary and externally interact with the receiver. And uh, you see in the first stage of the, uh, of the left interaction, the simulator also committed to dummy values and, and uh, all other sessions of the left commitment and the left and the right commitment will be emulated by the simulator by running as honest commit uh, strategy and honest uh, uh, receive a strategy uh, respectively. And uh, after the completion for a, simula for a simulation of an adversary, the simulator will sequentially extract all the witnesses of the second stage of the left uh, interaction and the first stage of the right interactions. And uh, the simulator will run runs as honest uh, commit strategy and commit to the value uh, to the VI that extracted in the first stage of the uh, right uh, interaction. And uh, after the commitment phase, uh, and uh, we have to emulate the decommit phase for the uh, adversary. You see, in the first stage of the left interaction, the, simu the simulator uh, will commit to the values extracted in the left uh, commitment phase, and in the second stage, we will receive aux auxiliary input VI from the outside, and um, all other sessions of the left decommit phase and the uh, uh, right decommitment phase will be emulated by the simulator. And, um, and uh, um, after the com if the right, if the ice right commitment uh, uh, decommitment phase succeeds. The simulator will uh, run as an honest commit and uh, uh, decommit, uh, decommit, decommit uh, opens value uh, to the external receiver. So we also assume that the uh, commitment phase and the decommitment phase don't overlap in time. So uh, finally, as a conclusion, uh, in our paper, we give a statistical binding commitment scheme that is concurrent number liable with respect to commitment and is 
concurrent non malleable with respect to de de decommitment, and it is rather efficient, but it uh, uses non black box techniques. And the open question is uh, how to remove the assumption, assumption about the time barrier between the commitment phase and the decommitment phase. Mm. So oh, that's all. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much.